signed in and just like movies paintings and music games are art and the reason art is created is to get your thought juices going or to bring out your emotions or at least tease your emotions or something and i think one of the heaviest emotions you can feel when experiencing art is sadness because the world we live in is is just full of sadness um it's full of happiness as well but i think the one that always gets you the most is sadness and i think that's because it can bring out such like raw emotion raw physical emotion and i think you remember sadness for a lot longer time than you do happiness i think happiness is something you look back on whereas sadness can sort of drag out and sometimes it won't leave you now i've had films make me cry before such as coco uh the lion king um fox and the hound that bit where she leaves him in the forest just, oh breaks my heart there are more grown-up movies too um, <laughs> it's not just disney films promise but i have never had a video game made me cry before and that one game that did it was death stranding now i wish i could have made this video last year when the game was released um but i wasn't actually recording videos or streaming or anything back then like i mentioned before the only reason i started creating youtube videos and streaming is because of lockdown i had nothing else to do so now i've started doing this i really regret that i didn't actually do it earlier and talk about this game because I think I might have to say it's one of my favorite games and I know I know this game is kind of like Marmite you either love it or you hate it personally I loved it it was moving it was just an amazing game now what initially drew me to this game was Kojima which I think drew a lot of people to the game in the first place but it was one of the games well Metal Gear was one of the games that I first fell in love with gaming with Metal Gear made me fall in love with gaming properly. I had played games before on the Sega Mega Drive and the PS1 but Metal Gear was the one that I got the demo disc, put it in almost every day and replayed that demo over and over and over again until my dad actually bought the game for me, the full game, to which then I played the full game over and over and over again. Now I played most of the other Metal Gear games. Um, I missed out on uh, Guns of the Patriots and that was because I never actually owned a PS3. Um, there was a couple of the PSP titles that I missed as well. But the Metal Gear franchise itself is always going to be my favourite franchise of games. It's a shame that we'll never actually see any more of them directed by Hideo Kojima. Because his directing of games is just phenomenal. And it, it's been brought forward into Death Stranding. Now I think a lot of people were turned off by this game. Um, in the first few minutes or first hour or two because it doesn't feel like you're doing much now the game does progress and get better I mean I'm trying to say that for other people that are trying to get into it me personally I loved it from beginning to end which is also one of the reasons why I'm so glad that I actually made this my first and only collector's edition that I've ever bought I bought special editions before um, I bought deluxe editions before never ever I spent over a hundred quid on a video game and I think that was because it had Kajio's, Kajio? Kojima's name attached to it and I knew that he was directing it and I knew he'd make a good job of it. I don't think I'll ever forget this game and pretty much every moment that I spent in that game. Now this isn't a review of Death Stranding, That's, it's way past time for that, it's been almost a year um, but I am here to talk about the three times in this game that made me cry and the third time I don't know what that was the third time that really got me so I'm not going to tell you how the game plays out how the story goes but I'm going to give you a little backstory so you sort of have an idea if you haven't played this game on the build up to these three moments that actually broke me down so you Play as Sam Bridges, who's played by Norman Reedus, who you might recognise from The Walking Dead. And essentially, at the beginning, you get a hold of 
this little kid, BB. <laughs> he calls her Lou. Um, oh yeah, should say this is a this is spoiler talk. Obviously, uh, I said she because throughout the entire game you think that it's a he is actually a girl. So he ends up calling her Louise by the end of the game. So you get a hold of this BB unit and she's with you through the entire game. You have to rock her, you have to make sure she's happy. Um, a lot of people found it irritating, I didn't. It was, it was, every time I heard Lou crying, I was just screaming inside to just like rock my controller, <laughs> just keep going. Um, and I, I didn't care that there was BTs around which are basically like these big ghost things that you have to like sort of sneak around. Um, I wasn't fussed that there was enemies shooting at me. I needed to make sure that BB was fine. So yeah, this game basically like forces this bond on you. And if you're the kind of person that has this maternal or paternal instinct, which I do because I have three kids, um, it will get you. <laughs> I can almost guarantee it will get you. I mean, you don't even have to have kids for this game to sort of make you feel connected to BB. It's the storytelling that Kojima has enforced in this game is just brilliant. So we progress through the story and the first moment that I'm going to tell you about is when you meet this woman called Mama and she has this tragic, tragic story. And when you first meet her, you see that she actually has a ghost baby um, attached to her that she has to look after and at that point you have no idea why you just know that she has this ghost baby attached to her and then they show you the cutscene they show how the, this building basically falls down on top of her and it kills her baby and she survives now don't get me wrong that bit did get me but what made my eyes leak was what happened afterwards now, from what I can remember, you do a few missions for a first before this happens, but essentially you get these cuffs that can basically cut ghosts out of the world, and it's a way to make this, the, the BT flooded areas that you're trying to traverse easier to actually get through, so you can get rid of these ghosts, move them into another plane of existence, and yeah, the field is safe for you. But then when you get back to Mama, you have to use these cuffs on the baby, on her baby. So she doesn't have this baby connected to her anymore. It just, it just goes. And yeah, that just, it just completely broke me that bit, dude. And like I say, going back to the fact that I actually have my own kids, thinking that I'd have to give them up for their own good would absolutely just tear me in two because I know I'd have to do it. Um, but obviously I wouldn't want to so anyway we progress further into the story and this is towards the end where the second time that broke me <laughs> happened and this was to do with Cliff Cliff is the guy that you've seen in the trailer who he has them sort of skeleton soldiers with him that he's connected to and he sort of you know you've seen that he sends them out to go after Sam and anyway, he's after you because you have his BB or so, <laughs> so he thinks and so you think. So we get to this cutscene where Cliff is with his wife who is dying um, or in a coma, I can't really remember, but she's not in the best of positions and his baby is in one of these units um, for the government to then use. Now I can't remember exactly why he does this, I'm just, I just remember he has a good reason, but he ends up ending his wife's life. Um, and then he takes his baby and tries to escape with his baby. So you see him trying all these different corridors and doors, trying to escape, all while security are looking for him. And he's got this baby with him and Sam, He's looking in on this situation. It's like a ghost sort of perspective where he's, he's not really there. He's just observing the situation. But this is what happened in the past before Cliff became the guy that's hunting him. I should have said, when he's hunting him, he's actually a ghost. He's not alive anymore. He 
he's, he's, he's a BT. But yeah, in this cutscene, he's he's alive, he's well, he's just not, yeah, he's, he's, he's a broken man, essentially. And so yeah, Cliff gets cornered back in the room where his wife was, and Sam's watching on, security turn up, um, his best friend is there, uh, trying to get the BB off him, Cliff's baby. And this is when the president comes into the room at that point and she ends up shooting Cliff and actually killing the baby as well at the same time. And funny enough, it wasn't actually that that got me. It was what happened after, kind of like I said last time with Mama. So like I said, Sam's watching this situation and Cliff's talking to him and this is when they both realized that the baby in Cliff's arms is actually Sam and Cliff is Sam's dad and it, that's what got me and I think it was just this reunion of one man that was looking for his, his lost son with this other man who didn't actually have a father figure at all not shown in the game anyway so it's like these two lost people they just just they just found each other again after so many years and they they had no clue who each other were to start with and then they suddenly realized that they're father and son and that just ah oh, yeah my eyes burst <laughs> now the third time this game made me cry this is the one that really really broke me so as i said you spend this entire game with bb lou and if you've grown attached, you, you've grown attached. You love this little baby in a jar that's like constantly stuck to your chest as you go around fighting enemies and fighting ghosts and trying to survive basically. Now, these BBs in these units, they they have like an expiry date, kind of like a battery. They do run out after a bit, which mm, that's the brutal way of putting it. They essentially die after a while. They, they never grow past uh, infancy and you are at that point you have just been talking to some other characters and then you leave them and you meet up with another character who is holding Lou and you realize that she's passed and already at that point my throat was just so tight I, was, I couldn't I couldn't comprehend the fact that this baby had just died that this baby that I'd spent hours with um, which felt like days, weeks, months, I don't know. <laughs> if this game really gets you attached to BB if you, like say, you have that maternal paternal instinct. So in the world of Death Stranding, when someone dies, you need to incinerate them or they basically become a ticking time bomb and they just completely destroy an area, um, killing everything that's there, wiping out the landscape. So you need to incinerate them and you've got BB Lou and you need to obviously take her to the incinerator so she's not a danger. So now you're doing this long walk to the incinerator. After all this time of like, like I say, you start off with the game walking everywhere and then you sort of progress to get bikes and cars and then you've got roads and you completely forget about the fact that you were, walk, were walking at one point in the game um, and now they make you walk one last time right at the end of the game to the incinerator and throughout this walk they have this one song playing called BB's theme by hold on I need to search it one sec so yeah BB's theme by Ludwig Forsell I think that's how you pronounce his name and the voice uh, singing I think that's Jenny Plant I think that's who the singer is in this song the song's amazing it's, it's so beautiful it's, it's, there's amazing music in this game but that one, because of what's happening in the story at the time, this song plays and it's just, it's so beautiful the way they did it. You're walking to the incinerator with BB, this this character that you spend so long with, and this song plays. I don't know if I can actually play it in my video. I'm going to leave it out, but I will leave a link to it down below in the description because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to um, get this video copyrighted or whatever. So yeah you do this long walk to the incinerator and yeah you get to the incinerator you place the unit inside um, and then as far as I can remember the camera like pans away 
And that's when Cliff's scene kicks in, like this whole long scene with Cliff, the one that I just described um, a minute ago. But when it comes back from that story, you realize that the BB unit is on the floor, open, and then the camera moves up to Sam holding Lou, basically trying to bring her back to life and there's just this whole struggle of him trying to bring her back and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking him watch this life just not doing anything it's just just floppy <laughs> it just breaks me and then finally he gives up he realises he can't do anything else and he just he just embraces her he just holds her and at that point obviously I'm I'm just like uh, <laughs> I wish I had recorded this at the time. I was just so heartbroken because um, I've never had such a, a strong emotional reaction to a game. And I, as I said, I wish I had gotten into streaming and recording videos at the time when I played this because you you want to see me be like this in in ed, like playing any other game at all. Now I thought I might have been like with. Uh, the Last of Us 2. I was kind of hoping that because The Last of Us 1, that that almost got me. But The Last of Us 2, that, um, yeah, there's, I think I just felt angry throughout that. Not at the game, just this the, the story made me angry. <laughs> I think it was intended to, though. But yeah, back to the Stranding. So he's holding Lou, obviously giving up, and then she suddenly, she grabs, I think it's a pin on his jacket, and yeah she's alive and he walks outside and it starts raining and he's standing in the rain which is a big thing um, in this game because the rain makes everything age really fast I won't get into the um, specifics of it because that's like I said this game they, this video is not a review but it's like it's this amazing scene where he's outside he's got a BB out of the unit which isn't supposed to be possible she's not supposed to be alive um, and it's basically doing what you've known as impossible throughout the entire game and making it possible it's it's just unbelievable and then the game just ends right there and at that point my son who was one at the time he had come round he'd seen the um, credits rolling on the screen I got tears on my face and the first thing I do is I just I get off my chair and I just hug him. I just hug him tightly, and I, I, I think that's what that game did for me. It, it, it broke into my paternal instincts and it just it crushed me. <laughs> but it had a happy ending, which I liked. It had a good ending, um, and I think that's why this game is 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 always going to be memorable for me. Um, and I'd like to say I'm completely glad I bought the collect's edition. I, I, I would like to buy some other collect's edition. I'm, I don't actually earn enough money to you know, do this every few months or every year. It's, I'm glad I did it though, it's, it was special. Um, my eldest, my oldest daughter, she absolutely loves BB Lou. <laughs> she always wanted to just hold it. Um, she's, she always asked me, where's BB Lou? Where's BB Lou? Kind of weird the kid would be into a baby in a jar. But, you know, she, she liked it. So yeah, that was it. I'd, I'd love to come across another game like that again. Hopefully we'll get a Death Stranding too. I don't know if it'll actually bring out them sort of emotions again. Um, it's kind of hard to do it again once you've done it once already. I've found, um, mainly with films, like I say, I've never really had a game bring out that much emotion in me before. And yeah, I couldn't stop thinking about Death Stranding for weeks. I really couldn't. I might actually get it again on PC because uh, I like photo mode. And I've, since I've upgraded the, the PC, I want to see how far I can push that and see if I can get some good photos. I've actually got some good photos. I think my thumbnail um, will be one of the pictures I took in-game, but that was on the PS4. I'll have to see how good the quality is. So yeah, I know it's kind of an odd video. I just I felt I needed to make it since I didn't actually make a video of me playing it originally when I first played the game. And I, I, I have been planning this video for like a couple of weeks. Glad I've done it now. Um, I don't know if, if I've included everything that I wanted to say. Um, 
probably do you know what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a rating um, as well <laughs> I know it's not a review but I'm gonna, personally I would have given it a 9 out of 10 I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 I wouldn't give anything a 10 out of 10 because that's a perfect score uh, I've heard so many people say this over the past few weeks in no game is perfect um, especially Death Stranding since yeah like I said it's like Marmite you, you either love it or you hate it um, Luckily for me, I spent as much as I did in it and absolutely loved it. Now, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be once I've edited it and stuff. Um, so I have no clue if I've waffled on or if I've uh, not said enough. But I'll get the hang of it at some point. I still got to make a few more videos. Um, see how well I do with this. But uh, yeah, if you want to see um, more of my content, don't forget to sub. Give me a sub. I need more subs, I need more people, <laughs> I need more people to talk with. And if you enjoyed this video, um, even if you found it mediocre, give me a like. Drop a comment down below as well and let me know um, if you've played the game and how you felt about it, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, whether the the parts that got me, if, if they got you too, and, and how strong your emotions were at them point, uh, them parts, just let me know. Now currently as of recording this, this is a Tuesday. Um, I'm going to try and do this as a schedule. I'm going to try and record a video on a Tuesday and Thursday. And then I'm going to be streaming on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday night. I'm going to try and keep up with that. It's kind of hard with the, with the type of job. Of, oh my gosh, I can't speak. It's kind of hard to do this with the kind of job I've got because I, I work behind a bar and my hours are all over the place every week. So I can't guarantee that schedule about Try and stick to it. I just jumped to my own shadow. I thought that was a moth or something. I hate moths. I can't stand them. Wouldn't kill them. Don't kill any bugs. I just, I can't stand them. They freak me out too much. So yeah, tomorrow will be the 2nd of September. Um, Wednesday, which means I should be streaming tomorrow night. So be there. Follow me on Twitch. I'll, I'll leave my link down in the description below. If not, I just waffle to myself while I'm playing the games anyway, so <laughs> you can you can lurk. If you don't turn up, I'm still just gonna chat on anyway because yeah, I'm, I'm kind of weird like that. Although I am kind of making these videos for YouTube, I make I make make I make all these you, uh, Twitch streams for YouTube. So yeah, it's kind of late. My voice is starting to go, and I can't really talk properly. So <laughs> thanks for watching. If you got to this point, I appreciate it. Cheers. Spark signed out.